Hey guys, I wanted to uh, do a little video here about ray diagrams. Now, uh, I wish I could do this in person and I might try to record me just doing some on some paper, but uh, this is a pretty good way to see what's going on. This is in GeoGebra and I'll have a little activity for you guys to do to, to uh, with these links and you can play with it and stuff. But um, there's a couple animations here. This one's about lenses. I've got one about mirrors. And the rules for these are pretty much the same. Um, we talked about the ray diagrams on one of those uh, videos, either A or B. And um, we thought about rays of light that came from the object hit the optical device. In this case, it's a lens. But uh, back then, it was a plain mirror. And we were talking about how tall of a mirror you needed and that kind of thing. So it's that kind of thing. Uh, if you were doing this with a piece of paper, you'd want to get a ruler and a sharp pencil. And um, maybe some graph paper would be fantastic. And you could draw these things out by hand. And again, I'll try to make up a little video of me doing that uh, in person. But uh, here's here's what I wanted you to see. I've got the uh, object right here and this is a lens now this is what we call a convex lens or a double convex it's convex on both sides all the lenses that we do will be symmetric so if it's convex on one side it'll be convex on the other side uh, they don't have to be that way there there are good reasons to not do it that way with uh, certain applications of lenses and mirrors and stuff but but uh, our lenses will be um, either like this symmetric and we're going to talk about thin lenses see how the uh, the lenses thickness is pretty small compared to its height to its diameter so that's a thin lens and um, the rule that we had uh, works really nice with thin lenses and so I kind of just wanted to show you how to draw the ray diagram we've also got the thin lens equation which we can you know do mathematically and stuff but this will help you do that little optics practice sheet that I that I have uh, as one of the activities too. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the rays here. Uh, it's got them in three different colors. And what you want to do is to draw these three rays anytime you're trying to do the, the ray diagram. So from the top of the object, I could have a parallel ray. It runs parallel to the optical axis. This line right here, the center line, is the optical axis. And that just gives us a base to work from. Uh, there's a couple points here. This is the focal point on the close side. And this would be the focal point on the far side. Uh, with this kind of lens, light will focus through that point if it's coming parallel to uh, the optical axis. All right. So here comes a ray that is parallel to the optical axis. It's going to the center line of the lens right there. This... Uh, this, you know, the, they've drawn in the lens so that you can kind of see the shape and go, oh, that's a convex. That's going to converge light to a point. But uh, we, we're really working off that center line right there. So the parallel ray comes all the way to the center line. And as soon as it hits the center line, it's going to converge downward through the focal point right here. And that light would just keep going. This is the kind of lens that you used when you were a kid to burn ants or set leaves on fire or something. One of those malicious things that you did back then. Um, that's the first ray, that blue ray. Okay. We draw the second ray. A second ray of light could have started here at the, the tip of the object. And they're calling this the axial ray. It goes through the axis right there. Uh, right where the center, lens, center line of the lens and the optical axis cross. Just draw a line right there and just keep going. You can see how these lines just go and go and go. Um, at some point, though, those two should cross. And wherever I can get two of these lines to cross, or more, um, I get the image. So let me go ahead and turn the image on here and see how the image would form up right there. Uh, notice that it's upside down. Notice that it's a little bit... Um, taller than the original um whatever okay but that's what we're looking for we're looking for that image there is a third ray that we could draw uh, from the top of the arrow we could go through the focal point on this side and when we hit the center line of the lens we want to run parallel to the optical axis now making sense of this one uh, the easiest thing to do is to run it backwards if i had a ray of light that ran this way parallel to the optical axis, hit the center line of the lens, then it would converge through the focal point on the on its far side, 
and it would pass through this point right here. So uh, if it works from right to left, then I ought to be able to trace it this way from the top down through the close focal point, hit the center line and run parallel to the axis right there. Those three lines should cross at a point. If they cross at a point, then I get the image right there, uh, and the, the tip of the object maps to where the tip of the image was. You could do this with every other point on the object. You could come halfway down, and you could draw a line parallel and through the axis and through the focal point, and you'd map out a point right there halfway um, on the image. But that's the shape of this thing. Uh, this animation is kind of nice because I can click right here at the tip of the object and I can shrink it down and you can see how as the object gets shorter, the image gets shorter. I can invert the whole thing. But notice the lines. The lines are staying pretty much the same thing. If I scoot the object this way, that's going to change my magnification. Right? The thing's getting bigger and bigger. I can zoom out here. Let me give me a chance to uh, oops, zoom wrong way. Um, see how much bigger that is right there? So as I get the object closer to the focal point, I'm going to get a higher magnification. As I move the object away from the focal point, from the close focal point, that magnification is going to get smaller and smaller. All right, so there's just some fun you can have with this, and I'll give you the links for this, and I'd love for you to just sit and play with it for five, ten minutes, whatever uh, whatever it takes. All right, but that's uh, that's the first ray diagram that uh, you probably ought to start on right there. Now, you might have seen it happen just a minute ago. A funny thing happens when I'm moving the object closer and closer to the focal point. The image, whoa, the image is getting farther and farther away because these angles are changing here. And as those angles change, right when I get right on top of the focal point, you see how the red line and the blue line run parallel or appear to run parallel? They actually do run parallel. Um, I can zoom out here as far as I like. You see how those are running parallel to each other? Those are never going to cross, so you're never going to get an image. If you put the object at the focal point of a converging lens, you don't get an image. If I go inside the focal length, I do get an image, but it's on the wrong side. Here it comes right here, and uh, zooming out again. See how it's way back there? Light shouldn't be back there. Light should start here at the object, go through a clear piece of glass called a lens, and should end up on this side. This is the wrong side, incorrect side, the original side. Over here, this is the correct side where things should end up. So this image is on the wrong side, and that means it's a virtual image. There is no way to hold a piece of paper right there and to get a picture of the arrow. You don't get a real image that you can project onto a card. You get a virtual image. Now, back when I had uh, this going on, the light from the object goes through the clear piece of glass, should end up on this side, and the lines do cross on this side. So this would be a real image, and I could hold a piece of paper right there and get a picture of the arrow on my piece of paper. All right? But when it looks like this, right there, the lines run parallel right at the focal length, so I don't get any image. But if I go inside that, then that's when I get uh, this virtual image. Uh, the best way to understand what's going on here is to think about putting your eye right here and looking through the lens at this object and seeing that. The whole thing happens in my eye, in my head. So uh, that virtual image thing, it's just like the man when you wave at the mirror, it appears that there is a man waving back at you, well, unless you're a lady, right? Uh, but this is the same thing. It's in my eye. It's in my head. I think I see this arrow when in reality I see this right here. See how much bigger it is? It's magnified. Uh, we would call this a magnifying lens. When I hold a magnifying lens and I want to see a butterfly or a, a electronics part or whatever it is that I'm looking at with a magnifying lens, I need to get that object inside the focal length 
of the lens and then I see a bigger image of it. It didn't make the object bigger, it just made the, the virtual image in my eye, in my head, uh, bigger. Okay, so that's a magnifying lens right there. And that's a pretty handy thing too. Um, you can drag this around and you know see some different possibilities. But basically, there's a virtual image. You know it's a virtual image because it's on the same side as the object, and that just can't happen. That would have a negative object. Uh, that would have a negative image distance. All right. Whereas something like this, this would have a positive image distance. That's on the correct side. Uh, this is on the wrong side. Negative opposite direction. Negative sign. Right. Uh, here's kind of an interesting point also. If I put it exactly at twice the focal length, uh, right there is the focal length, and I'm going to try to line that right up on that dot right there. Uh, that's sometimes called C, or the center. Um, that would have to do with the, the radius of curvature here, and the focal point should be half of the radius of that curve. If I put it at C, then the object, the lines come through, and the image is the same image distance as the object distance, and the image's height is the same as the object's height. Um, the image here is upside down, so it would have a, a magnification of negative 1. The negative means upside down, pointed the opposite direction, and uh, 1 is the magnification, meaning it's 100% of what it started with. The magnification of this guy, uh, let's see, let me move it, uh, let's go like about here maybe, okay? Uh, the magnification here, see, this one's this tall, and that one might be twice as tall. So the magnification there will be negative 2. Negative because it's upside down, 2 because it's twice as big as the original. All right, that is a convex lens or a converging lens. It converges light together to that point over there at F. And um, so that's that's that one. I'm going to grab F here and I'm going to slip it over to the other side like that. And did you see the, the shape of the lens change? Let me let me go back again. I'm going to drag it over here. See how the, the lens is. I'm going to turn all the rays off and the image off and everything. Um, right there I've got the convex lens. It looks like a football. When I take the focal point to the other side, now I have a concave lens. And it's, it's skinnier in the middle than it is on the edges. This is a different animal right here. So i got to learn to use the uh, ray diagrams on this. I've got my object. You can put that wherever you want. But this is the focal length that it's looking at. A concave lens will diverge light outward and uh, we say it has a negative focal length. So this is a negative focal length. That's why it's over here on the same side as the object. Let me put the rays on. The rays do like that. All right, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit because this is uh, hard enough to see as it is. Um, a little bigger please. All right, you want to keep basically the same rules here. Um, Here's my object. From the top of the object, I need to run parallel to the optical axis. I need to hit the center line of the lens, but this is a diverging lens, so it diverges the light outward. And the way to draw that line is to put your ruler, draw, the, draw straight across, and when you get right here, put your ruler from the focal point to where it touches the center line of the lens and keep going outward there. That light is diverged outward as if it came from the focal point on the same side right there. All right, so that's that one. The second line uh, was the axial, the red line here. So we'll do that one again. I'm coming down. I'm aiming for that for that axis point right there where the center line of the lens crosses the optical axis. And I just keep going like that. All right. The third ray that we did before was the focal uh, thing. Remember how we came through the focal point on this side where the light, uh, where the object was? Uh, since I've switched the kind of lens, now I need to aim for the other focal point over here for this guy. And so I aim for that. I put my ruler between the top of this object and that right there. 
that focal point on the far side. Only when I hit the center line of the lens, I need to run parallel to the optical axis. And just like before, this one makes more sense going backwards. So I'm going to come from this side, let the ray of light go backwards parallel to the optical axis. And when it hits the center line, it's going to diverge outward as if it had come from the focal point right there. All right. And it would go up there and touch the top of the arrow. So we're thinking about light that goes this way, like that. And when it hits the center line, it runs that way. It's basically the same three rules. You always want to run parallel to the axis and then either towards the focal point or away from the, the original focal point. You want to go through the dead center of, of everything, the red line, and then the yellow line is um, kind of head for the focal point that you didn't use before and run parallel when you get there uh, to the lens. Okay, uh, Maybe that made sense or not. I don't know. But that's what we want to do. Let's drag the object around, see some different possibilities. Um, we still haven't seen where the image, I'm sorry, let's not touch uh, the object yet. Um, where is the image? Well, if I'm thinking about those lines crossing, you can see that the blue line on the right and the yellow line on the right and the red line on the right are never going to cross, right? The blue line's going up and the red line's going down and the yellow line, those just aren't going to cross. So I don't get an image over here. And this would be the correct side, right? I got a clear piece of glass. The light should start here, should end up over here. I don't get an image over there. So I'm not going to get a real image here. But I do get a virtual image, and we'd like to know where that virtual image is. We're looking for a place where the three lines cross. And uh, here again, all these virtual images happen in your head. So the best way to think about it would be to uh, say, well, my eye is over here. And my eye sees this blue ray of light coming, and this yellow ray of light coming, and this red ray of light coming. And... Um, my eye just draws the straight line. So it sees the blue line coming from over here, right? My, my eye follows that line straight back, forgets about the lens and say, oh, it came from over there somewhere. And the yellow line came from over here somewhere. And the red line came from back here. And where those three cross right there, that's where I'm going to get my image, uh, like that. Okay. So you almost got to draw the diagram and then say, I'm over here and I see these three rays coming and then just, just chase that and that and that. And where those three come together, that's your image location right there. All right. Now, um, let me drag this thing around and you can kind of see it move and do its, do its thing. All right. Let's see. There's the object and the image are always on the same side. That means that it's always virtual. I never, uh, if I come in here like this, see how it just gets closer and closer. I never get a, uh, I never get a, a real image out of this. I can only get a con, I'm sorry, I can only get a virtual image out of the, out of a concave lens. All right. So that's that. And again, I'll, I'll give you the links and you can play with that. Uh, I'd also like you to learn how to do these by hand. Uh, so find a ruler and a, a nice sharp pencil so you can make some, some fine lines. And um, that, that optics practice sheet will have a bunch of these and you can play with them and, and uh, see what happens. All right. Let me show you mirrors real quick. Um, here's a mirror. Uh, this is a concave mirror. My object is on this side and See, see that cavity there, that cave, if you will? Um, it goes in right there. So uh, this is another possibility. But here we're talking about a mirror. The other was lenses. But um, I want to draw those same rays. When I draw the parallel ray, here's what I want to do. The line runs parallel to the optical axis, hits the optical device, and goes through the focal point. Okay, it's going to bounce that light. This is not a lens where the light goes through and is refracted. This is a mirror where the light hits and bounces, it reflects off of it. But it's going to focal, it's going to, it's going to focus through that focal point right there. All right. I need to draw the second ray. 
Um, let's do this um, central ray, I guess. Uh, remember how the second ray we drew with the lenses was uh, was um, sorry about that. Phone alarm went off. Um, that second ray went through the center where where the uh, the lenses uh, center line crossed the axis. So this is kind of that line again. And uh, if I go to the center line there, I need it to reflect. Um, remember, we're talking about um, we're talking about re mirrors here. We're talking about light reflecting, and the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. So that's really the only rule here. With that purple line, it's really easy to see that the angle above the optical axis is the same as the angle below the optical axis. And so that's really what we're we're uh, we're doing there. Uh, maybe if I turn off the red line. You can see that those two angles are, or at least should be, the, the same there. Okay? So we've got two rays. Uh, do they cross somewhere? Yeah. That means I will get an image, and that image will be right there. It's nice to do the third ray just to kind of confirm it, just to nail it down. Uh, that third ray, remember, went through the focal point, hit the optical device, and then ran parallel to the optical axis. So we'll, we'll turn that one on, and there it is right there. Uh, the first ray, the red one, should go parallel to the axis and then aim for the focal point. The, the second one, the purple one, should go to the center, the axis, if you will, and then bounce off at, at that same angle. And the third one, uh, go uh, through the focal point and then uh, parallel to the axis. All right. That's pretty much always those, those three rules always work. There is one more that you can do here that looks like that. Um, right here, um, they are aiming from the top of the arrow through the C point, through the center, uh, which would be half, which would be twice the, the focal length. So right here you can see that I've got the radius of this mirror set at 8. Uh, that makes the focal point 4, half of 8. So this would be the center of the circle. You can see that circle right there. These are spherical mirrors that we're talking about. So perfect circle that goes around like that. And the center would be 8. So if I go through the center, it's going to hit the mirror, and it's going to hit normal to the mirror. That would be a right angle right there. Uh, if, if this is the center, and it goes to the edge, then that's going to be a, uh, a radius. And remember how radii always uh, intersect circles at 90 degree angle. So it's hitting at a 90 degree angle. It's going to bounce and go straight back through itself right there, right back to where it came from. You can draw that one if you want. Uh, you don't really have to. Two is all you have to have. Three is nice just to kind of make sure you didn't goof up one of the other two. But that image is going to be right there. Now the image doesn't draw right here where it should. It should be a little bit to the left. And I'm a little bit disappointed in, in this. Somehow they got the thing off a little bit. But uh, it should be, the head of the arrow should be right there and come straight up like that. All right, so just scoot it over in your mind a little bit. I'll put the blue line back in like that. Um, like that, but uh, that's what's going on. We can drag the object around and kind of see how that changes things. Notice as I get closer to the focal point, the object, I'm sorry, the image is getting bigger and bigger. I get a bigger magnification, okay? And so... You know, right there, that is the, um, let me drop put that radial line back in. That's interesting. Um, I'm not sure what's off with the simulation here. But um, that's basically where that image should be. If I put it at C, if I put the object at C, just like with the lenses, then the image distance should be the same as the object distance, and the height should be the same. Only one of them will be upside down. So that image is actually where it should be. And maybe the lines are a little bit off somewhere. I don't know. Um, but uh, as I get closer to the focal point, I think it's bigger and bigger. I'm going to shrink it down here. Trying to see. Let me zoom out a little bit. So you can see this thing. Which way I got to go? Oh, man. There it is. Okay. Um, but uh, watch what happens right when I get to the focal point. Uh, 
Well, yeah, something's a little bit off with the measurement on this thing. Um, let's pretend that's right. Right when I get there to the focal point. Um, and I got to scoot in a little bit more. See how the lines go parallel again? The red line and the purple line, those are never going to cross. So I don't get a real image when I'm right there at F. It's just like with the lens. I'm not going to get a line there because my lines run parallel and don't cross. Okay. Um, I do get an image, but it's actually, well, actually at the focal point, I don't. So if I scoot it in a little bit farther, uh, closer inside the focal point, I do get an image, but it's over here. Okay. The, this is a mirror we're talking about. The light from the object should hit the mirror and bounce back. It should stay on the right. It never goes over there on the left. So this is not a real image. This is another virtual image where it's happening in my head. Uh, I can't hold a piece of paper over here and get any light on it, any projection, because I never get any light over there. It all bounces and it stays over here on the right. But if I were to have an object and look at it in this mirror inside the focal length, then my uh, my mind's eye would see that, and that would be the uh, the virtual image. Uh, the ladies have a little uh, makeup mirror, a compact mirror, that's basically this right here. And so the idea is you you put your face right here, and when you look at it, you see a magnification of your face, and you can do whatever they do with uh, mirrors. I, don't, I have no idea, but uh, that's the idea right there. And um, it magnifies it, and you can see it, but it's all in your head. There's there's no real image over there. All right. Um, but that's the picture there. And so play with that. Get to where you can draw those rays and um, see if you can't do a little better than they did here. I'm not sure what's up with that. All right. Um, now, what I want to also do is take... Uh, this object and I want to drag drag the object over here to the other side and if my object is on this side of a mirror then we would say that that is a a convex mirror I no longer have that cavity facing me I have um, the the bulge sticking towards me so this would be a a, uh, a convex mirror convex mirrors diverge light and uh, you can see that right here. I draw that first ray parallel to the axis. I hit the mirror and I bounce as if I had come from the focal point. So kind of draw your line right here. Put your ruler between this point and that point where it touches the mirror and just draw outward. It's diverging right there, moving away from uh, each other. Okay, the second one headed for the axis. So the purple line comes here. We're still headed for the uh, where the mirror crosses the optical axis. And it needs to bounce back at that same angle. The angle of incidence is equal to the same, uh, the angle of uh, reflection. Easiest way to do that line is to uh, draw your first purple line right here until it touches right there. And then if you've got graph paper, you can just come here and count how many blocks of height you have for the object. Let's say uh, you got one, two, three, four blocks right there. So just come down one, two, three, four blocks. And if this height right here is the same as that height, then this angle is going to be the same as that angle. And that just makes it really easy to draw that line right there, that purple line. All right. The gold line is the same as it's always been. I want to leave the top of the object. I want to head for the other focal point, the one over here, only when I hit the, uh, the mirror, then I need to bounce and run parallel to the optical axis. All right. You can see that on the left-hand side, the red line and the gold line and the purple line never cross, so I don't get an image. I never get a real image from this. I can drag this thing as far as close up, as far back. Uh, the image is always on the wrong side. Light's coming from this side on the left, hitting and bouncing. It stays over here. So this would be the correct side, and that would be the incorrect side. And I, um, I'm always, always on the wrong side. Okay, so this is a negative image distance, and I uh, 
I only get these virtual images off of that. So how do I figure out where the image is? Well, I'm looking for a place where these cross. All right. And once again, remember, since this is a virtual image, it's light that's coming into my eye, making a virtual image inside my eye. So my eye sees that red line. It sees this yellow line and it sees that purple line coming at it. It traces them all backwards, seemingly through the mirror and where those cross. And here again, it's a little bit goofed up, but uh, that red line to my eye, I trace it backwards and it looks like it came this way. So I'm, I'm looking at that part. The purple line looks like it came from over here and the gold line looks like it came from over here somewhere. Uh, right where those three lines cross is where it should be. Let's see what they do with the radial. Yeah, there's the radial line too. That one actually kind of came close. The, the gold and the blue, uh, it's just the red one that's a little bit off. Maybe that's why uh, this isn't working. Okay, but uh, that's that's your convex lenses. So that's all, all four. We had two kinds of lenses, two kinds of mirrors. That was the concave lens, which uh, never gives you a real image. It's always uh, virtual. You had the convex lens, which can give you either real or virtual. And then right here, I've got the convex mirror, which is always virtual. And then we had the concave uh, lens, which is sometimes real. This one would be real. That one would be virtual. Okay. Same thing on the lens here. This one is virtual and that one is real. All right. So it's all about which side it goes on. And just remembering this is where it started. A lens light should be over here. That would be the correct side. So that one's positive real image. Whereas if my focal length is a negative number, blip, the lens just changed to the other kind. I only get virtual images here. On this one, this is a convex lens. I only get virtual ones here. If I change the, uh, what did I have to do? Change the, yeah, there we go. Uh, the object to the other side, this would be a concave. So right there's a, virtual image see how these lines eventually will cross way up there and my real image would be when i get outside of focal length all right hope that helps hope that makes sense um i'll try to do the one by hand where you can actually see me do the ruler and the pen and and all that and uh i'd like you to know how to do those i think those are important uh, there are some interesting questions they pose down here uh, so it wouldn't hurt to look at those when you do this what phenomenon does the failure of all three lines to cross neatly at a single point demonstrate if the lines don't cross you don't get an image all right uh, when is the image right side up play with that when is the image real when it's on the side it should be on for a mirror uh, it, that means the light's on the side that it started on. And with the lens, it's on the side opposite it started on. Uh, when is the image larger than the object? That's that magnification that we're talking about. Positive magnification will be right side up. Question number two here. Negative uh, magnification will be, it's inverted, upside down. And what does moving the object point through the mirror correspond to physically? Okay, we, we did that. So play with those. Uh, see what you think. Uh, send me questions. Bring them up in class. Whatever you like. But uh, these are kind of fun to do. Uh, nothing hard about it. Just uh, you're always drawing those three rays. Run parallel to the axis through the focal point. Go through the center point and then go through the other focal point and run parallel to the axis. All right. Takes a little bit of practice, but uh, there's nothing hard about it. Kind of fun to do. Thank you very much. Have a good day.